Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is my continuity tester kit. What that means is essentially it's a short tester kit. It requires 7 to 12 volts DC to operate. There's a 78LO5 5 volt regulator on it to protect the microcontroller. Uh, you add, simply add two wires to it that act as probes. And what happens is if you place between 2 ohms and 100 ohms, between those two lines, that little LED will start blinking, indicating that there's a very low resistance between the uh, between the two lines. And if there's less than two ohms, what will happen is the LED will light up quickly, and the um, the the little piezo buzzer will will sound say so dead short. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a, a demonstration. What I've got here is a 98 ohm resistor. I'll just, I'll just pick it up for sake of being easy. So it's less than 100 ohms. If I take this 1 ohm resistor and I short it, if I do a dead short, but if I used a 3 ohm or 2 or 3 ohm resistor, uh, we would just get the blinking LED. So it's very sensitive to direct shorts. And uh, so that, yeah, essentially, there's two modes of operation. Now, let me show you. Uh, a 1k ohm. Here's a 1k ohm. No reaction. No reaction at all. So it's a fun little kit, very easy to put together, and we're actually going to put together one right now from scratch. This is what comes with the kit. You got your customized PCB, well labeled, a 78LO5 5 volt regulator, a program 10, uh, PIC 10 F222 microcontroller, uh, a dip 8 socket, an LED, red, 3 millimeter, uh, an electrolytic 10 microfarad capacitor, two 10k ohm, or 10 to 1k ohm resistors, a 470 ohm resistor to limit current to the LED, a 0 0.1 microfarad um, uh, ceramic capacitor decoupling, a 2 pin terminal block for power, and a 5 volt piezo buzzer. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the resistors in place and then the capacitors. We're going to do it step by step so you know how to put this together if you buy one. R1 is labeled 1K. It's labeled R1 1K. R3 right here is labeled R3 470R which is 470 ohms. And R2 is labeled 1K R2 right down at the bottom. So it's very well labeled. You shouldn't have a problem. The two 1Ks are tied together here. Uh, if the, by chance they come apart in shipping, just use your multimeter, or if, hopefully if you know how to read resistors, that's even more helpful. <clears throat> so since the resistors are not polarized, you can, uh, you can place them in either way. Just make sure that each resistor goes in the right slot and uh, solder, it up nice, uh, <clears throat> solder it up nicely, no shorts. When we're done that, we'll do our capacitors. The footprint C2 is also labeled 0.1 U, which is 0.1 micro, and that's your ceramic capacitor, which is also not polarized. You can place it in either direction. Now the uh, C1, uh, the 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, has a long leg and a short leg. <clears throat> the long leg is positive, the short leg is negative. On the footprint, on the lower right, uh, the r lower right of the footprint, you'll notice a little plus sign. That's an indicator that the, the, the hole closest to that little plus sign is the positive hole. So, in this case, it's, around, it's on the right-hand side. So you want to make sure that when you place your electrolytic, you place it in the right hole and your sm smaller lead in the left hole. Don't reverse that or else you're going to have a bad day. I'm going to solder these two into place and then we're going to do our uh, regulator and our LED. The footprint here is labeled IC2. 78LO5, and this is our 78LO5. The front flat side, the, the face, uh, has labeling on it. Now you'll notice that the uh, footprint has a flat side and a curved side. The regulator has a flat side, which has the writing on it, and a curved side. Yeah, from a bird's eye view, you want to match the curved side to the curved side, and the flat side to the flat side. Um, just make sure that you do this, because if you turn it around, your circuit's not going to work. From a bird's eye view, make sure that the curved side of the regulator faces the back and that the flat side faces the front. Now the LED, you'll notice it has a short leg and a long leg, similar to the capacitor. Uh, the LED is placed in the LED1 slot. 
there's two ways to determine which side is the negative and which is the positive on this footprint. But the easiest way is to, is to uh, from this perspective, the negative is on the left, the positive is on the right. Uh, the, the way to determine that is the side with the actual LED indicator, LED1, is your negative side. But there's also another way. On the footprint, there's a curved side and a flat side. Flat side indicates negative. So the shorter lead will go in the left-hand side here. That's a little bit harder to indicate. You have to look really closely, and you certainly can't see that from the video right now. So from your LED, from this perspective, make sure that your positive longer lead goes in the right from this perspective, and your shorter goes in the left. Place it flush to the board, and make sure that you solder. You solder it cleanly, and there's no shorts. That goes for everything, especially the regulator, because that might be a little bit tricky for you, unless you have a really nice soldering iron. But again, you should, you're not going to come up with any shorts as long as you're careful. Next, we'll do the socket, the IC, and the uh, terminal block. An easy step. The uh, IC1 footprint, labeled PIC 10F222, has a little notch on the bottom of the footprint. The socket, the 8-pin dip socket, has a notch on the bottom as well. So, from a bird's eye view, match the no both notches together. And there's also a no notch on the IC. Make sure that that, from this perspective, is facing downwards. All the notches have to line up or else you're going to put your IC backwards. You don't want that. So solder in, make sure it's flush down to the board, and then you can place your IC in uh, following the notch in the footprint in the slot. Uh, the terminal block has a side with the screw terminals and a side with just plastic. Make sure that the side with your screw terminals is facing outwards. If you have it facing inwards, it's going to be facing the capacitor and you're never going to wire your power lines in. So, solder those in a place, we'll do the piezo, and then we'll do the probes. The piezo buzzer goes in the buzzer footprint. On the left-hand side, there is a positive uh, plus sign symbol. That means that your positive lead of the buzzer will go into that, into that hole. Now, if you look at the buzzer, like the diode, like the, or the LED, like the electrolytic capacitor, there's a long lead and a short lead. Like the other ones, place the long lead in the hole with the positive sign and the shorter one in the other. Now, it won't go flush to the board, but push it down so you have... Uh, enough lead coming out from the other side to solder it in. Make sure it's level, but it doesn't have to be forced down. It's going to look nice anyway. So solder that in place and we'll get some wire, we'll do the probes, we'll do a test. It's all together, so all we have to do is add a little bit of solder to the probe areas. Doesn't matter which one first. Just flood the area is what I do. With a bunch of solder. You can put your, uh, your wires through the holes, but as you can see, it's just easy to, uh, for test purposes anyway. You can be as neat or as messy about it as you feel necessary. And there we go. Two wires soldered. Make sure you do a better solder job than I did. Now all I have to do is power it up. There is a uh, ground terminal and a V plus terminal on your terminal block. Ground is obviously your your DC negative and V plus is your V positive. So let's place 7 to 12 volts at the input and we'll test it. All done. Looks good. Direct short to test. Good. Uh, a 1K shouldn't give us any kind of reaction. Nope, no reaction. And then lastly we will do our uh, 98 ohm resistor. Less than 100 ohms, but not a dead short. Great. So it works. Fun little kit, inexpensive, found at engineeringshop.com and electroniclessons.com. Thanks for watching, everyone.